This is a story for those who wish that they could truly read between the lines of the book they were reading and see the world of the story through the eyes of the author. For those who wish that they could make nonfiction from fiction. For those who wish that dreams were true. This is a story of a group of wayward friends who came together from the far reaches of two worlds to come together and to help make dreams reality. This is Hazeltown Story. Hello and welcome to Hazeltown Story Episode 6. Um, we are getting further into what exactly um, we are trying to be doing inside of this. Now we know it's an Animancer's Lair. Uh, so we'll see if this does turn out to be some abandoned hospital and what exactly uh, Orion is trying to do there. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, we are continuing the campaign of the scrying game. Uh, if you are just joining us um, for this one for some reason, um, make sure to start at the beginning because this is pretty deep in. Uh, it shouldn't take too terribly long to get in, but uh, yeah, uh, this is probably not the best one to go just straight in. Um, in this episode, we are with same same party. So we have uh, Carnival playing uh, Elmas Grainer, uh, Deathmaster playing Nellos Masters, and Torpid Type is playing Aravia. And I play, uh, I am kind of standing in for Lila Moore. And also, um, of course, your GM. Um, I will go ahead and say this time, or for this episode in particular, uh, the recording thing that we used uh, had a hiccup at the time, uh, like when it was recording, which meant that it's going to sound kind of garbly in certain spots. Uh, particularly one in which I actually did some audio editing. So it's kind of, I had to kind of work around that. So you're going to hear some weird things, which unfortunately I really couldn't work around. Um, so apologies for that. Um, but yeah, uh, with that, that kind of is all the things I wanted to mention for this particular episode. Um, so uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. Is back yet? Uh, it doesn't. I'm definitely not, but yeah, I am. Okay. Um, so where would you want to go next? Because we went so, west. So, so basically you went west. And then uh, Nels and Lila went, I believe. You went, south. they went south. South. So let's go east. Uh, actually, really quick. You said there are a bunch of rooms in the central like area. So the rooms that. So uh, basically, uh, it's not so much that there's rooms in the central area. It's more that there is a room going in each cardinal direction. Okay, I just remember you mentioning something about doors, but uh, yeah, let's just go to the east then. Okay, uh, so you go in there, and you happen to notice it looks an awful like 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 the area to the west. Uh, and then you kind of go in there, and you find that it is basically symmetrical, similar to a library situation. Um, so is there? So basically, at this point, at from what you've gone in there, uh, basically the only directions you have not gone into are north, northeast. And southwest and southeast. Northeast. Sure. Okay. Uh, you go into that room. Uh, and in there, you kind of just walk in. And you see what looks like essentially some sort of presentation room. I bet this is where they taught you how to be a pervert. Um, basically, what you do is you find, like, there is a projector screen in one of those, like, uh like the a transparency projector, like the basically the transparent sheets that you just kind of put on, it gets projected on the white uh, whiteboard, and just basically right. like a bunch of benches as well, and as, as well as a lectern. Do do okay. they have like one of those dry erase markers or whatever for it? Um, there is a chalkboard. I'm gonna stick on the chalkboard. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna make you roll for that. You, you draw <laughs> that. You draw that. <laughs> So we found their meeting hole, effectively, for debriefing zone. We should, Essentially. Uh, let's, let's look at the transparencies. Um, you find that basically there are... Um, you find that there are a bunch of blank transparencies and a marker, like a Sharpie at some point. You can't find... Or, how, okay. Uh, actually, uh, as you two kind of look around... Um, Elmas, uh, give me a uh, give me a perception check. 
Uh, yeah, perception check. So that's two, two green, one yellow, and what's the uh, what's the uh, purple? Uh, the purple give uh, just a. Uh, I would say give me two. Okay. Game. Oh, didn't get. Come on. There we go. And how you do? How did you do the rolling again, Torpid? I think you just hit R. Or I don't know what? How did you like, get? How you... Oh, oh I usually right click. Ah, okay. Right then, right click, roll, and refresh. Two successes, one threat. Okay. Um. So, um, basically, uh, you see that there's like a desk on the side, uh, and you. Kind of take a look, and you do find a few like, transparencies that look like they have something written on them. Uh, but as you do, uh, one falls behind kind of the desk, uh, and you kind of go and reach it, and basically you spend a little bit of time trying to uh, dig that out, uh, and you take one strain. All right, one strain. Um, but you're able to get it out, and you do happen to find uh, a handful of transparencies. Is there like anything kind of noticeable on them, or is it kind of just faded at this point? Uh, it it is somewhat faded, but what you can tell, um, basically you see, um, you see, um, what looks like um is ba- basically you see um a bunch of numbers that look like. Uh, you you basically see a bunch of city names, like uh, major city names. So you see things like see like New York, uh, Chicago, um, and just a handful of other cities that are from both planets. Uh, and you uh, see a bunch of numbers next to them, and it looks like the numbers range from say about fifty to sixty, uh, with a few having much less than that, like ten, and then one having like a hundred. Uh, you notice that the one that's really high uh, is actually going to uh, New York. Ah, uh, someone's they're planning a ter- They're planning a terrorism. Great. Uh, just a mass flashing. Hmm. Which I guess you could consider a form of terrorism. Yeah, I suppose a flash mob, if you will. <laughs> no. All right. To uh, be fair. We're- one hundred percent, Aravia thinks they're just a group of perverts. They, you, you do have the low intelligence. Um, wizard. Yes. Um. So, is there anything else you want to check in the room? I think we got basically most of everything at this point. All right. Um. So, basically, Lila and uh, Nellis, you. Basically, from that hallway that you went into, uh, the one thing that you did not... Basically, there was a door that's on the end of that hallway that you were in, or you could just head back. Door. Uh, you open it up, and it basically uh, is a staircase leading down. Oh. Uh, also, there's also an elevator in the center of it. So basically, there's a spiral staircase going down, going around an elevator. I see. There's a sub-basement to this basement. That was directed at Lila. Oh, yeah, it looks like it looks like we could go down. Um, there are I don't think we've kind of explored all this area yet. So why don't we kind of go back and make sure that we've taken th- uh, through this floor? Go to boss. OK, um, so basically we head back. Uh, I think yeah. you exit out of the presentation room at the same time. Uh, so you kind of meet up. Um, so from there, um, so let's see, uh, as you two all meet up, uh, what is so basically meet up is like, okay, uh, do we still want to split or do we want, there's looks like there's two rooms that we haven't been into. We haven't gone, uh, essentially we haven't gone Southwest and Southeast. They split up. Sure. Same, same grouping. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, who wants to go east or west? I'll go east. So we go west. Journey to the west, let's do this. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you... So, I, I'll go with uh, 
let's see. Uh, let's do, um, let's do Elmas and Aravia first. Uh, so you go into this hallway. You notice that it's a rather narrow, kind of winding hallway. Uh, eventually, you come to a door that uh, you try and open it, uh, and it it it, it doesn't. And uh, you see that there is a padlock, or there is a lock, a lock, uh, a uh, there is a lock mechanism next to it. I shoot the lock with my shotgun. Uh, I will go in and say uh, it is a technical mechanical lock. Okay, can I try and just let's uh, try so, this? So one thing uh, I did add from the last session is I kind of um, changed the way that the rules worked uh, regarding that kind of thing. Uh, so it's a lot more straightforward. Uh, so let me pull up the guide for it. Um, well, I'm still bitter. Well, it's it's more it's more the fact that it, I kind of like it was a really sh like shoestring and like bubble gum uh, way I did it last time. And this is now uh, so there is now a techno uh, a technomancy spell called control, uh, which is exactly what you need to do. All right. Uh, so. The way that this is, I have this down, uh, is basically control. Um, basically, allows basically what it does allow technomancers to take control of, of various things. Um, so basically, what uh, do you want to try and unlock this? Yes. So what you what, so okay. What do I have? So. By default, a techno-mechanical lock uh, is actually, on its base, a formidable check. However, uh, you need to reduce that. So, what is your rank in computers? Uh, rank in computers is... Hold on, let me get it. No. Computers, computers is two. Okay. Uh, and what is your rank in skullduggery? Is also two. Uh, so uh, you need to give me a, um, okay. So it starts at, uh, so give me a three. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be three difficulty, because uh, the way it works is basically it starts out at five. Ten mechanical locks start at five. Uh, then you add one minus rank in computer, so you actually subtract one from that, uh, and then you also add an additional one minus rank in skullduggery, so another additional minus one. And then I'm gonna spend a story point. Okay. okay, so um, what is your technomancy? Technomancy is uh, two yellow, one green. Okay, so you need three yellows now. All right. Three yellows and how many purple? Uh, Three purple. Three purple. Here goes nothing from there. And then roll. Let's see what the... Two oh, success... You Okay, so you you just you just pop it open like it you just lock it, the door just opens. Yeah, it worked this time. Um, so you kind of continue on, uh, and basically, what you see, uh, in there is basically that kind of leads you into a room that uh is basically looks like it's around the same length as the room that had all the crates in it. Uh, but it's about twice as wide. Uh, and in this room, you see um, what looks like a bunch of tables that ha have just androids strewn about them. Like it looks like they are basically like they're just stock androids. Like there's nothing to them. Uh, uh, but at the other end, like at the very end, you see um, basically a. Uh, what well, looks like a, um, like a chair that you would sit in a doctor's office, like basically one that lets you like lean back a little bit, uh, All right, and kind of plugged in. Like then also right, basically to the right of it, you see a bunch of computers, kind of almost mainframe looking computers. Uh, but then to the other side of that chair, you see a giant crystalline structure like basically it is like think of a uh basically a large slab of rock that has a very bright crystal a bright large crystal that's about the size like it's about the size of a person 
Okay, Elmas is going to go ahead and turn on the computer and see what they can get from the files. Um, so you are able to turn on the computer, but the way that um, what you can tell from it, uh, basically, uh, you are when you try and turn it on, you basically have a security lock. You try and you need to kind of get through. Okay. Or, or basically, it's, you see a login screen that basically it's asking for username and password. So what? Either com either computers or skullduggery work. Uh, so. Uh, basically, um, yeah, give me a, just give me a base computer check. All right, that works. Basic is one. Uh, well, uh, so give me, actually, let me phrase that. Give me a computers, um, give, let me take a look at my, what exactly difficulty should be. Give me a hard check. So three difficulty. All right. There. Roll. Fresh. Four successes with one threat. Okay, uh, so you what you happen to do is uh, basically from your knowledge of doing some hacking, you kind of know that there are some kind of set um, like passwords, like basically base pack passwords, and you try using some of them. Uh, you even try using some like um, background kind of things that you know that can get into the computer. Um, you do uh, happen to hit it a few times, like or you hit like error a few times, and you kind of notice that it starts to basically almost lock you out. But you kind of shut the computer off and then back on again <laughs> before it can actually do anything. Um, so, but you do eventually get into it. Um, and basically, what you can tell is that it is a very put together, like it looks like a. Um, basically like a programming student's first program. Like it's a very bare bones program that basically is a bunch. It's basically a console. Oh God, not. Uh, uh, and basically you have like, um, you have a few commands, but basically it does say what each command basically, um, you come across, um, uh, uh, basically there are, Basically, there are commands that are basically, um, rest basically the commands that you see are restore, transfer, and uh, turn off. Uh, let's go with restore. Um, so basically, you, um, you hit restore. The moment that you hit restore, uh, that giant crystal lights up, like it turns incredibly bright. Uh, 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 so here's the thing, uh, you, you and Aravia are standing there just kind of looking at that thing. Um, and Nellos, you, or not Nellos, uh, Elmas, you're just kind of standing there and you don't kind of see anything. Uh, Aravia, uh, you start to basically, you hear someone just say, hello, uh, but you can't tell where it's coming from. I, and you, you're. Hello, is anyone is anyone out there? For a loose definition of anyone. Uh so basically, um you are you I think you're trying to say this out loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so basically, um so Elmas, you are hearing Aravia speak stuff that you but you're not able to hear it. Oh. Oh, this is huh. This is weird. So I guess Elvis turns around and just starts waving and tries to like like kind of air write out words the communicative just things to Aravia just basically trying to get across, can you hear me? And Aravia just waves okay. back. Okay. Um uh, she doesn't pick up on English, she's just waving. Okay. Um so Aravia you here. Uh you're you're different. Than the others, are you going to hurt us too? I mean, mm, not unless you give me a reason to. That's so uh, no. So don't we don't make us into the machines anymore? Uh, luckily for you, I I don't really do machines, but yeah, okay. I, um, let's see. Um, 
just trying to think of what how to continue on. Uh, so basically, then you hear that, and then basically you kind of like take a look at the crystal, uh, and you do see that inside the lights there is almost movement inside this crystal. Like you see, like lights moving within it. Um, also, you notice that um, when you hit restore, a uh, part of the thing lit up, like uh, kind of a band on the side. You notice that it is actually not part of the rock; it is actually something that is attached to it, like a fiber cable or something like that. I think of like a kind of a bracket that's around it, like circular bracket, like almost like like a like almost think like um. Oh, what's the uh, battle royale neck thing, but just attached to a rock? Like it, it's basically ah. a bracket, something. It's not that you can tell that it's like explosive or anything, but you tell that it is co- connected to this computer. Okay. So uh, uh, Ravi just points to Crystal and just goes, "Is is that you?" Um. Yes, we are the Crystal. At at least that's oh. how you phrase it. Oh man, the royal we, impressive. So what do you want of me then? What we want is to return. We we want to live. And, and how would I go about doing that? I mean, you're a... remove this bracket. On it, coach. Uh, so Aravia just goes to tear it off. Basically, uh, I should point out at this point, basically that entire conversation. You basically, um, Elmas did not. You only heard your your side of that okay with this i'm still going over to tear it off okay uh i'm gonna just sit and watch because elmas doesn't think elmas doesn't think that they could want doesn't want to actually try ish if Raleigh's gonna try and break shit elmas is gonna just stand behind and watch it happen actually elmas toss me the drill uh here sure yeah enabler i say man actually <laughs> good <laughs> that worked <laughs> Um, so if you're in doing the drill, um, let's see. Oh, actually, there, there's actually a skill for this. I don't know if you heard how good you are in it. Uh, actually, um. I should handle the drill. Uh, yeah, that's going to be a mechanics check, which is intelligence based. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. You know what? You know what, Elmas, just do me a solid and break this, this thing and just. Aravia waves her hand at the bracket off. Uh, sure. You mind telling me what the what you what the other part of the conversation that I didn't hear? I I thought you heard it quite clearly. Come on, it wasn't exactly subtle. No, I heard none of that. So break the bracket. All right, fair enough. I'll. So okay, so just basic mechanics or well, what am uh, I rolling? So that would be um. That would be because what? Do I, um. So that do I take a boost since I've got the yeah, power drill? It's going to at least be a boost. Uh, so yeah, take mechanics plus a boost. Um. I, I'm just going to say easy because it's probably something a little patchwork. Okay, so that's easy is one purple, right? Yes. There and uh, one boost. There we go. Three successes, three advantages. Okay, so basically. You do that, um, and from that, uh, basically, the computer, what you see is the computer kind of, like, you see it, like, air out and then just kind of shut off. Um, but it kind of looks like it does it in a sense that it's, like, uh, the program crashed but didn't, like, send anything. Like, it, it has a clean kind of, like, okay, it's unplugged, so I don't, I'm not needed now. So then it shuts off. Um, ah, okay. Uh, but from that, you see the crystal glow a little brighter. Um, and then you almost see, feel like uh, it, um, basically, you see it like kind of light up. And then it seems like all the lights inside of it almost kind of point in your direction and just kind of go up and down for a little bit. And you actually feel like uh, it's trying to make a connection with you just for a brief moment. Uh, and from that, you feel slightly, you actually feel better. Uh, so reduce your strain, or like reduce your strain by two. All right. That was easy to do. Um, and the crystal says, Thank you. Uh, 
whoever whoever has been using that device over there uh is taking our it's taking our our well oh, i gotta figure out the phrases it is taking our our being and turning it in basically it's stealing from us so thank you that machine doesn't look like it looks like that bracket's not there anymore so they're not going to be able to take us anymore and also they turned us off so that we wouldn't be able to do anything we were able to live among this among our home but it looks like we're a little farther away from it where exactly was your uh, so, home? so it, yeah this is also going straight to Arabia. Ah, okay. uh, so ex how exactly would you get home anyway well, we are kind of, I guess, home, but we've been moved from where we originally are. But I guess if we're not going to be, if you're not, if you're, we're not being taken anymore, I'm, I guess we're fine here. How large is this crystal again? Uh, it's about this, it's about, uh, it's about your, like your height, uh, but it is probably like twice as thick as you like if that makes sense like in volume it is twice your volume damn that's a thick crystal yeah it, it is a large crystal thick with actually thick with three yeah it, it, it is a three c thick um but yes um so uh i guess with that is there anything else you want to check in that room i guess we could look at the machines um it, it just looks like various types of computers Speaking of which, I'm going to trash that computer. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. Um, how? In what way are you going to trash the computer? Um, Shotgun, I'm guessing. So if, if, what, if what you would want to... If, so if you want to... Just a reminder, if you want to participate in this illness as well, uh, overload is a, po a possibility with technomancy. Oh, right. That makes sure that the hard drives are fried and they can't recover anything. Uh, so, yeah. So, I believe actually the way that uh, this is going to work, uh, I think now that you've actually, because you originally you took control of it, uh, so there really isn't anything to get behind, uh, like to prevent you from accessing it. Oh, right, because I got in the, I hacked in, so there's no, like, firewall. Like, so, yeah, like, let's go. You got on the computer, so basically you know enough to open up its technomancy. Technoman yeah, technomanic port. Uh, so really, in order to fry it, uh, that is going to be, um, that is going to be, uh, so you have options. Uh, you're close enough that you don't need to extend the range. Um, if you want to fry, you can either restore it to its base or you can fry it. No, we're frying this uh, shit. <laughs> do you want to do it in a way that uh, makes it somewhat? Uh, do you want to make some sparks fly? Sure, I mean, why not? Flashy as hell because then Aravia would respect you more. Uh, so because basically, uh, you would add in difficulty if you want to do it stealthily. Oh, I don't, we don't care about stealth at this point. Okay, so. so that is going to be a technomancy with two difficulty. Two difficulty and uh, two yellow. So also just a reminder because you were doing a technomancy, uh, that will do two strain. Two strain. Good thing I got that heal back. Yep, eh, wrong button. Time to ride the... Time to just basically always be stressed. I was going to say, your your strain is, what, like 14? So you're barely... Like, Four. you're, like, barely breaking a sweat. Right, and how many purple again? Uh, two? That is two. All right. Want to make sure. Roll and refresh. Two failure or two advantage. Oh, Jesus well, fucking failed. Christ. Uh, so, um... To advantage, let me check. That actually might not be the end of the world. Um, because actually, with your... You basically, you don't fry it, but... Um, uh, let me check, because I don't think there's actually... I actually got to look at the uh, the magic rules. Um, because there are some... I, some let's see, I got the actual book. It's an incredible role. Um, because I think, I mean, you're not going to, like, it's not going to be fried, but it will. Okay, there's, we're in the magic part of the book. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, it just tells me how to spend thread. Great. Um, so how about this? Um, you basically, uh, you don't fry it essentially. Um, but you definitely put in a state that it's not going to work. Uh, but in the way, like it makes it so that, um, so I'm trying to, I'm going to basically, you're going to recover your stream back from that. I just got to figure out how, um, basically you don't fry it, but basically you make it shut. You actually, actually, you just basically, you actually just reset it. Uh, and you basically render it unoperable, uh, but in a very, uh, unsparkful way. Oh, well, it's, it's basically, it doesn't work. I mean, if you want to do other things to double, to double tap, that's fine, but it, they should be able to get any more access to it. Just in a brief moment of clarity, Ravi is like, yeah, it doesn't matter anyway. It's just a dream. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, that is, is there anything else you want to do in there? Nah, I think that's good. Nah, we, we, I, think, I think we accomplished what we wanted to. Okay. Um, so Lila and Nellos. Um, so you go before we was good. Yeah, before we actually head into the room, uh, Nellos will wait for Aravia and Elmas to head off to their room, and then she will go and attempt to open the drawer that Aravia was trying to open. Okay. Um. Uh. Give me athletics check. Um. All right. Make it up. Oh, let me see. See, uh, athletic check and give me make it a two difficulty. Four successes for three. Okay. Um. So you, let's see. How do I? What fun stuff do I do at three? Well, that's not gonna work. Um. Okay. So basically, you succeed. Um. Basically, you find that it's kind of like stuck there. Um. You kind of kind of really pull at the drawer. Um, but the thing is, is as you pull the drawer, you pull it out, uh, but then you kind of stumble and you fall on your ass. Uh, and you take two strain. All right. Because basically Lila... That fucking drawer so is cursed. So basically Lila's looking at, like, you know that she just looked at you do something really stupid. <laughs> this deeply cursed fucking drawer. <laughs> uh, and then Lila's like, okay, can we get to you on now? In a second. Okay, I'll I'll I'll, I'll let you sit there for a moment. But, well, no. If I replace the drawer back in the thing, we'll get stuck again. Um, probably not, because you found something got it was just something got jammed in it, and it it it, right, it, it got unjammed. All right, then I'm going to stick the drawer back in. Okay, and now we can go to the room. Okay. Uh, so you also in your hallway, uh, come across a lock. Alright. Same lock uh, as before, mechanical. Uh, this is a type of mechanical, yes. Um, so, you basically, if you, since I don't believe you have technomancy, so you can't, like, do it like that, you can mechanically try and go through it, which is a little bit trickier. Skullduggery. That is going to be Skullduggery. That is actually probably going to be a, because let's see, it was three for that, uh, that's actually probably going to be a four. Now I I do did you take your lockpick set? Yeah. Okay, so you okay, so I okay, we had an advantage onto that. Okay. Okay, so go ahead and roll. Uh okay, so you failed to take you actually failed to get through the lock. Um so but basically um what you you were able to actually pry it off the wall. Um, like it is still active, okay. but you have access to like you have opened up the like ports so that if someone could actually like use technomancy, they would have a much easier time to do it. All right. Uh, well, you want to take a crack at this? Um. Well, I I don't like. Sorry, I'm classically trained. I don't have the that these uh wires. So I believe that we're gonna have to rely on uh Elmis and Ravia for this. So let's go back and get them. Very well. Okay, All right. Okay. So I guess we. Need... Uh, so basically, uh, we kind of you kind of reconvene, or they, basically they were. Uh, so uh, Nellis and uh, Lila were sitting there a little longer 
then uh, because they they got done with theirs first, so you kind of walk back in. Uh, so, what what exactly do you say? There's a weird crystal thing that they've been draining into robots, androids, I guess. Uh, what do you mean by that? And Carnival, Carnival, you don't know this. I mean, I'm guessing. Wait, you didn't tell me, right? No, that. no, Ravi, I never told you. God, you don't, damn know, it. You don't know uh, shit. I mean, I mean, basically, you would at least know that there is a giant weird crystal thing that to- that somehow told us yeah. to take something off of it. Yeah. Uh, okay, I say that much. And then I was like, "There's a, there's a what?" Yeah, it's, it's a crystal. He's the royal we. Basically, the crystal lo- talk to you, digit. It talked to Aravia, and I never heard a thing. Huh. It's because you need better ears. Um, so Lila kind of takes a look at you with like a, like a, huh? Kind of exa- like a, kind of a, like a very interested look. Uh, so basically she goes into that room. Uh, and then... Yeah, Nellis will follow, but uh, as she's doing so, she will pull the drawer open that they were, that she had Ravi working on earlier. All while looking Ravi in the eyes. Yeah, I'm over it. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, she Lila goes into the room and Nellis is with her, and Lila just kind of looks stunned at this crystal. Um, and basically, she turns to Nellis and basically says, "Do you do you know what this is?" That's a good question. Do I have a? Uh, so that? you would. Uh, let's see. Let's call this. You know what? Um, a cult would you would probably know what it is through a cult. So ro- make a knowledge occult. Um, let's call that difficulty two. Right. Oh, oh, okay. okay. So there's our first triumph. Okay. So, uh, of course, this is okay. I got to think about how to do this. Um, you, uh, basically, you realize what it is. Um, you understand, uh, but before I get into what it is, uh, the magnitude of what this actually is, uh, actually kind of somewhat, like, overwhelms you for a moment, uh, and you actually take, um, one strain. Okay. What is it? Um, so what it is, uh, it is a sylph colony. Uh, it is essentially a, a... Uh, basically a hive mind of spirits um, that basically live within various uh, natural, like basically uh, they live within certain areas, either in like forest uh, through uh, basically these crystalline structures. And basically they are able to interact with uh, basically, obviously they are immobile, but they have managed to, they are a thing of legend uh, that basically uh, it's basically they're kind of like fairies, except for the fact that um, like not a lot of people realize that they exist, hmm. but it is something that seeing it for the first time, it's like imagining that you actually walk and you see a, like a centaur. Hmm. So it is something that is like very stunning. Um, and it is something that basically, um, uh, basically, uh, they, uh, you, like, I just looked at it as like, my God, they actually exist. And it's, it's just a pretty crystal. There's people like, there's, hang on. Okay. Are they like spirits as in they're related to the dead or are they just, uh, uh not necessarily. They, they're not related to the dead. They're just living being. They're just, uh, living beings that do not live in corporeal form. Oh, like they're not ghosts. They are. Oh, yeah. It don't. They are a its own thing. Oh, and Nellis doesn't give a shit. Okay, she just points at the crystal and says, "That's a self colony." Ah, uh, it's a crystal. No, it's a self colony. It's a pretty glowing crystal. It's a pretty glowing crystal with a lot of things inside of it. Oh, so it wasn't the royal we? Well. It's weird. Sylph, while if you talk to one on one, it's an individual, but really they only have. There are a singular being with multiple forms. 
if that makes sense. So it's not the royal we. Sure. I don't know. I just think it's a pretty crystal. I mean, it is very pretty. Now let's just rolls her eyes and says, "You're the one we're stuck with a translator." Uh, basically, so they are not. Uh, they don't really have anything. That's, they're not saying anything. So basically, uh, it's just kind of moving. Okay. Uh-huh. Um. So in that case, you kind of move back into the main room. Yeah. Um. What I want someone to do is let me just think. Um. Uh. Okay. Uh. So basically, um. You go, you all go back into the center room. Uh. Lila kind of points out. I was like, oh, we have a tight but like there's a lock that we came in to our hallway. We need one of you to fix it. Or we we want you if we're gonna try and get through it without like trying to find the key to it, uh, we're gonna need one of you to help. Yeah, I got the it. Ravi just it. takes out her shotgun. Uh, we we already tried uh, on hooking. We're gonna need some techromancy with this. Okay, let's let's use the nerd. Yep, I did the one over at the other hallway. So okay, so this is going to be it's a um, I'm gonna say it's not it's not even um, it's not even. It, it's a it. simple check. Ah, okay. So just roll that your technomancy. There we go. Two successes, one advantage, and a triumph. Okay. It, Holy shit. So it, uh, you have it unlocked. Um, but not only that. So you have it unlocked, uh, and basically it opens in a way that, like, you're able to get through the door relatively quietly. Um, so you lock the door or like you open the door uh, the thing is is as you kind of turn around uh you actually hear um the door close like in the at the end of the hallway so you're at the end of the hallway uh the door is now just freshly closed huh nice let's go to turn around and you hear welcome to the family <laughs> come to call for help oh no uh, so you're all four of you are in this narrow hallway, um, and you see a door, like the door, like you know. Basically, it is very obvious that there is someone at the end of this hallway. All right, so Nellis will try to cautiously sneak up to the door. Okay. All right, and try to listen on the other side. Okay. Um. Let's see. What would that be? That would be. Perception. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, that would be perception. All right. How many difficulty? Uh, that would be. Let's call this two. Um. Okay. So, successful one threat. So, um, you hear. Uh, basically, what you hear is. Uh, a thud at the end, other end of the hallway, or like basically you hear in that room, uh, or whatever's behind there, you hear a thud. That sounds mm-hmm. like a table being knocked over. All right. In that case, Nellis will motion for a Ravi to come forward. Yeah. Does Ravi come forward? Yeah, yeah, she does. Uh, All right. So while this is going on, um. Basically, Lila just kind of gives a motion. It's like, should we prepare? And basically, she pulls out her um, repeater. It's like, basically, it's like, okay, is it showtime? All right. Uh, no, it just gives like a lazy thumbs up. Um. So before um you this goes on, um, let's see. Uh, I need to make. Oh, let's see. Let me take a look what options I have. Let me find my thing. Okay, where's my attack? So I am going to make a wizardry plus three, or for three difficulty. Okay, that's two, two proficiency. Actually, it's, it's actually just these right here. And, huh. Okay, so uh basically her so basically she holds up her um 
her like gun essentially and kind of looks into it and then realizes that tries to load it but that or like tries to basically focus on it but basically looks like she has some trouble and then basically tries to have to kind of realize that she's having some slight issue with it um so she is able to actually but looks like she's actually able to do it uh thing is she took um she basically had to do it twice so she took four strain in order to so much shakes her head oh actually let me let me so i just realized i have an incidental i'll suppose what they're trying to do uh, so she's trying to. So basically, the the way that the magic her gun works is basically she casts a spell into it, and basically, uh, when she casts the spell once, it basically allows her to make uh, additional attacks without having to spend strain. Hmm. All right. Uh, actually, um, what I am going to do is, uh, do you mind if I use a story point? I don't care. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So. I just say, do you mind if I use one of your story points? Yeah, no. We, we okay, can, so yeah. basically, what that will do is she has something called brilliant casting, which basically uh, I can spend a story point and add um, uh, advantage in terms of my ranks in magic or knowledge magic, which is two. Uh, so basically, that turned into four successes, one threat, which actually that means that that gun is now going to do because I added empowered to it which means that she is going to do three plus uh, let's see her gun now does revolver plus three so three plus three plus uh, so basically it's going to do like so it's hold on, hold on so it's going to be three for intellect but doubled so six plus three, plus four. So she's going to do 13 damage with her gun. Uh, okay. Neat. So uh, okay. with that, she is now prepared. All right. Nellos will like quietly motion to Aravia that the two of them should kick the door down on the count of three. Just Aravia gives her a thumbs up. All right. And one, two, three kick the door down okay uh let's just say who is in whose point no i assume it'd be nellos because she's the one calling the shots here yeah and also i think our brawl is the yeah, same i was gonna say who is the one who actually physically kicked the door down it's like both of us kicked the door down at the same time okay um in that case uh i need um both of you to roll oh let's see i'm, I'm trying to think of how this works uh, I need, um, here's, okay, here's, okay, here's what, because this is going to, this is kind of weird and outside of, uh, the thing, uh, what each of you are going to do is you're each going to, so here, your D10s, each of you take a D10 and roll. Okay, one on the left is my, oh, left for me. I, so, uh, why don't you just, like, take it and. This one is mine. This one is mine. All right, then this is. Okay, uh, what are your numbers? I got a seven. All right. You get your dice out of there. Oh, it's not going to matter, because you just need to see what the number is. All right. Four. Okay, so, Def, I need you to make a vigilance check. All right. What difficulty? Um, I, I'm going to say... Oh, actually, I know what it is. Uh, let me check. Uh, that is... Because I need to take a look. At this. What is uh that is uh actually a simple. Oh, so I just this one. Okay. Okay, so um you basically you basically end up in front. Um but the moment that you walk in to that room, you see uh someone behind the uh, desk that you were on, um, basically, uh, with a pistol in hand, uh, and basically tries. Basically, you notice this quickly, uh, and actually duck out of the way, uh, healing you one strain as he fires a burst into the hallway, but not hitting you. Thank you for listening to Hazeltown's story. 
If you'd like to get updates on this show and many other shows hosted by me, Lola DePuzzlo, you can follow at Hazeltown Story on Twitter. And if you would like to get to know me more from a personal standpoint, you can follow my personal Twitter at Lola DePuzzlo. If you would like to watch this be recorded live, you can go to twitch.tv slash Puzzle and follow the channel for notifications of when this show, as well as other shows like Retro Rank Rhapsody, are being recorded. If you would like to add this podcast to your podcatcher of choice, you can search for WLDP Hazeltown Radio and find us on most major podcatching search engines. Or you can manually add rss.hazeltown.life to your podcatcher. Thank you for listening. And I hope you come around for the next episode.